Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Primesberger, the editor of eWeek. Thank you very much for joining us today for this session of eWeek eSpeaks. It's a series of uh, video interviews with IT thought leaders. Today's interview is Elon Peleg. He's the co-founder and CEO of a company called Lightrun. And uh, welcome, Elon, to eSpeaks. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about yourself and about the company and uh, and how you came up with the name Lightrun. I think I think that's a pretty interesting question to start off. Sure. So um, I started out in a totally different profession. Uh, I was an athlete until the age of 21. Um, I was an international middle distance runner, and I think competitive running taught me discipline and you know competitive spirit. Uh, but after I quit running, I decided to move on. Uh, to a software development career. I was a developer in both enterprise and successful startup companies, which were acquired. And basically Lightrun was founded following our personal frustration uh, with understanding and debugging production applications. Both myself and uh, my co-founder Leonid Blufstein suffered from uh, a lack of agility when observing production applications. So you see the problem is that logs, metrics, and traces, they're defined statically on the left side of the SDLC in development environments, while they're being emitted, observed, and controlled on the right side in production. And this gap uh, leads to two main problems. The first one is that developers tend to overlog their applications, which causes huge volumes of logs to be emitted and paid for, while the majority of them are irrelevant. And on the other hand, uh, this broken process also leads to gaps of observability, um, which leads to you know a tedious and and I would say iterative process of hot fixing each time they miss some log lines or some performance metrics. And generally speaking, they want to uh, get more information about running application. Okay, can you so define? We, could you define observability for me in in your terms? I think that uh, when talking about observability, um, basically it says um, it's about the ability to answer new questions about running software without having to ship new code. This is okay. how we define observability. But in reality, all of these solutions are limited by logs and metrics, again, which, which I mentioned before, uh, which are defined statically during the development phase. And light one is about the ability to allow developers to define what data is being collected from the application in real time while the application is still running. And by doing that, we allow them to react much faster to production issues and basically to adapt what information the applications reveal about themselves at runtime, taking into consideration what happens on the right side. Yeah, it's, um, it sounds like Lightrun is a real DevOps type application. Is that a fair statement? Because we're talking about developers and sometimes how they overload their their applications and then the operations people who have to make this work in all the platforms and is is light run i'm just kind of fishing here but is light run kind of that connector that makes those things work light run is about shifting observability to the left uh basically we give the power of controlling managing observing uh, observability pillars to the hands of the developers, removing the ops manager from this process. Uh, ah. First, are those, yeah. are those guys going to be pleased with that being removed from the whole process? Um, I think that it depends of the value that the organization gains. But uh, you know, the tedious processes that are currently involved of tuning in uh, the observability pillars. Um, is not so granular for today because they simply don't have the application context. If, for example, they want to tune uh, the log level of a very specific package from info to debug, it's being uh, done for the whole package without taking into consideration application context such as specific users, specific flow, specific tenant, for example, in a multi-tenant SaaS application. So you want to change maybe the, the, the log level from info to debug for a very specific user, which currently suffers from this uh, issue you want to debug, right? Uh, this is only one thing, but uh, the other thing that we remove is involving them in the process of releasing new CI CD or new hotfix version each time you miss a very you know small piece of information. 
-hmm. And by streamlining this process and again, shifting it left to the hands of the developers, you kind of streamline this whole process to be a real time one. Okay, so can you give me an example of a use case? Think of, a, of an application that we might understand uh, and, and how the continuous observability and uh, the, the debugging process, the automated debugging process, helps to make that application work better for people. Sure, sure. So basically this continuous debugging and continuous observability as we call it, uh, for us is an, might be a natural extension of feature flagging or progressive delivery. When developing heavy uh, new features, developers use Lightroom to verify that requests take the correct path through the code before expanding the feature to wider audience. This allows them to ensure that they behave as expected. They inspect the runtime data by adding dynamically these snapshots or metrics and potentially rollback if they identify some wrong data or flow. Okay. Um, does this preclude the, the, the old school process of testing and retesting and Q&A because it's done continuously in the background all the time? Yeah, yeah, actually it does because, you know, uh, we're talking about testing in production for a few years. Uh, like companies want to have this agility of testing new features, you know, in, in, a, in a mitigated way, but right. uh, in a real, within a real production data with a real production flow and scale. So this is exactly about that. We give you the uh, capability to observe dynamically the state of the application at any given point of execution. And by doing that, you actually apply this testing production uh, uh, um, techniques. Okay. Um, can you describe some of your clients? What, what, kinds, of, uh, what, what kinds of companies, enterprises uh, use this type of, uh, of development sure. tool? Sure. So we have dozens of customers um, from mid-sized companies to heavily regulated enterprises. Mm -hmm. um, we're totally agnostic to support on-prem monolithic environments, um, as well as microservices and serverless. So we, since, since our agent, our core technology, is an application agent that runs alongside the process itself, we're totally agnostic to the environment, and this is why we support this wide range of uh, companies and architectures. Okay, and is it is it a cloud service or is it something that has to run on a server inside of a system or what? Both of them are supported. We can give you like uh, a Docker image to run our whole service uh, standalone in your environment in an on-premise deployment uh, way. And the other way we also support cloud service like you know, we can uh, connect with our management service just by downloading in a very simple way, uh, a plugin for ID in mm -hmm. order to do the code and, and debug, and as well, you know, uh, the agent that you should attach to your uh, application that you want to monitor or debug. Okay, so this is really, really uh, ahead of the curve type software development, a lot of automation involved, and the observability thing, which is becoming a hot uh, and very interesting term. But can you tell me maybe as a last question, um, Elon, is there a trend uh, that you're seeing in your part of the development world um, that you think uh, is something that we should be, be wary of going forward for developers? Yeah, I think that we saw this shift left with testing, um, you know, with uh, infrastructure as a code, uh, with operations, right, with security. And we think that it's time to shift left observability as well. Um, because observability is a very, um, I would say, cri critical for developers to be able to interact in a more agile way with, you know, with the, the, the product that they just delivered, um, and you want to streamline this process. Uh, so by shifting it left again to the hands of developers, I think it should be the next trend uh, that we should discuss during the upcoming years. Okay. I think developers will get a lot of value out of this interview. Thank you very much, Elon. I appreciate your time today. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Thanks for yeah. having me. Glad to hear about Lightrun. And uh, for everybody following along to the end here of our eWeek seg uh, e eSpeak segment, thank you very much and have a great rest of your eWeek. Thanks for joining us on eWeek eSpeaks. 
Go to eWeek.com to hear more conversations with IT thought leaders.